wanted to give a quick introduction to the computing environment that we're going to be using for machine learning practice this semester. Uh, unlike previous semesters, we're going to be using a service from Google called CoLaboratory. Uh, this is an interactive Python development environment. It already has all of the packages installed that you should be needing this semester. If not, uh, it's easy to install additional packages on the fly. Uh, in this environment, all of your code and data are stored in Google Drive. And uh, through Google Drive, you'll be able to access all of the data and code that we're providing. You're also welcome to set up your own uh, Jupyter lab uh, setup on your own machine. Uh, and, and again, it, it's easy to uh, access all of the materials that we're making available uh, through Google Drive. And there's a, a, a link in uh, Canvas to the drive itself. So getting things uh, set up initially, uh, in the syllabus section under Canvas, uh, you'll find a, a link to some a document called File Access to Google Drive. Uh, the, the essence of what you need to go through, and I'll, I'll touch on a little bit of it uh, today, uh, is first off, you need to create a Google account if you don't already have one. Uh, you need to create a shortcut from uh, your local Google Drive to ours, so you can access our, our files and uh, relatively easily. Uh, and then uh, you, you'll go through a, a quick uh, test execution of some code just to verify that you're able to access the, the data that we have made available. Once that's all set up, there are a variety of entry points into CoLaboratory. One is this URL here. Uh, this just gets you to the front page. Um, but you, if you already have files stored in Google Drive, uh, either within yours or you can do this with, with ours as well, uh, you can just double click on uh, on an IPYNB uh, file and that will bring up CoLab. So this is uh, the, the, the name that is used for, uh, for Jupyter Notebooks. So what's actually going on under the hood when you start CoLab is that you're actually starting a virtual machine instance uh, sitting on some uh, Google server uh, out in the ether somewhere. Uh, this is a proper virtual machine, so, and it's it's executing uh, a variety of Linux. Uh, in in order to support that virtual machine, there are lots of uh, resources that, uh, that 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 are brought to bear to, to make that happen. So there's some real hardware um, backing the the virtual machine. There is uh, storage for the virtual machine itself. Uh, you can even uh, request that a, a GPU or a TPU tensor processing unit. Uh, be attached to your virtual machine, but that's for very heavy duty kinds of uh, computation. Your, the, the files attached to your virtual machine only exist as long as the virtual machine is up and running. Um, if you want to be storing uh, files more permanently, uh, persistent storage is uh, done within Google Drive. So don't uh, for, forget this. So uh, we'll go through uh, an example today where we mount uh, the, the drive in your virtual machine. Uh, and, and then you should be making sure that you're storing all new files over there. Uh, if you are storing files outside of your Google Drive, you put, it, you put the file somewhere else in your virtual machine, uh, and then you shut it down, you will lose those files. So do make sure you get this right. Uh, the, the Google policy, uh, for these virtual machines is that uh, you can continue to execute as long as uh, your process is actually doing something. Uh, if uh, the, the virtual machine stops doing work and then uh, interaction is idle for uh, 60 minutes, then the machine will pause and some, somewhere along the line it also terminates. So uh, if you're expecting uh, data to uh, to, to be available or an interactive session to be available 24 hours later, um, that's not, that actually won't uh, work properly. So do keep an eye on things that are uh, running uh, as you're doing, say, your homework assignments. Uh, to set up your own server, uh, I uh, advise setting up uh, Jupyter Lab. 
Uh, this is actually a nicer environment than notebook itself, especially because you can have uh, a tiling of multiple files open all at once. Uh, uh, but minimally, what you'll want are things like Python and uh, scikit-learn, NumPy, pandas. Uh, there will be some others that, that you'll need uh, along the way, uh, but those are relatively easy to install. If you need help with this, then do uh, uh, start a discussion uh, on Slack. All right, so let's do a live uh, demonstration here. Uh, so this is uh, the file that is uh, pointed to uh, from Canvas syllabus. Uh, it is within my uh, Google Drive. Uh, here, I've already gone through a number of these steps. So of course, I already have an account. Um, uh, and uh, let's go ahead and go to this location here. And this is uh, the Google Drive uh, that we are sharing with, with the rest of you for the purposes of the semester. So there's the document that we were just looking at right there. And uh, there are folders uh, for the data sets that we're sharing. So there's a, a variety of things uh, sitting in there and those will, we'll use those over the course of the semester uh, and, pro and probably be adding additional items as well as we go. Uh, there is one bit of demo code that we'll try out here in a second. And then as homework assignments get posted and data get posted associated with the homework assignments, you'll, you'll find those here. And, and then throughout the course of the semester, uh, there is a, uh, a lot of the, the, the video lectures are uh, done in the context of working through a, a notebook and making changes to that notebook. And all of the skeletons that I start from in the live demonstration will be stored here. Apparently they are not there at this point in time, but we'll get those put in place. Okay, so let's, let's do a, a quick demonstration right now in the demo uh, area, there is one uh, uh, notebook file uh, so this, this uh, icon here indicates that this is a, uh, a collab uh, operable no notebook. So we'll just double click on that. And what this process has done now is it's actually started a virtual machine uh, on uh, behalf of uh, you. And, uh, and uh, what the notebook already contains is a set of uh, cells that are uh, each individually executable. Uh, and and th these just take you through a quick test to make sure everything is uh, working properly. So let's, let's go ahead and go through that process. Um, so each, each of these things here is a, a separate cell. Um, there is a, a, a Python environment that sits behind this, uh, this notebook interface. Uh, but until you actually execute a cell, that Python environment hasn't hasn't seen the, the code that is uh, that that is shown in the cell. So uh, just by me clicking on this cell here, um, this is a set of uh, imports to bring in libraries that we need for this particular demonstration. Just clicking on it um, isn't sufficient to to actually affect the underlying Python environment. So you actually have to uh, execute that. So you certainly can push the play button here. Um, it was not authorized by Google. We're going to run it anyway. Um, the, the play button is certainly one way to uh, do execution of a cell. Um, how, however, you'll find it a lot easier at the keyboard. You can do a control enter or a shift enter, and that will, uh, will also execute uh, that particular cell. So that, that code then gets pushed out to uh, the Python environment. And now that environment has access to all of these libraries. And we'll talk through the course of the semester uh, using uh, these various pieces here. Um, the, the next step is actually mounting the drive. And uh, in my case, okay, so, uh, so this is what you'll, you will actually see. Um, so, so you have to actually uh, authenticate your CoLab instance against your Google Drive and just follow the instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to this browser link, which uh, tells me 
that I need to select an account uh, and we'll sign in and and then it gives me a, a one-time uh, code that I'll copy to my cut buffer. And then coming back over to this example, then I can uh, copy that authorization code uh, here and an enter should do the trick. So it needs to think about that for a moment. Um, what this is doing is that it is telling uh, the local virtual machine to mount your Google Drive in a location called content slash drive. And we'll take a look at that here in a, in a moment. Uh, and you can see that there's a, a message here that we were successful at mounting that. Uh, in some scenarios, you've, you've already done, the mounting has already happened. You'll just get a message back that says that the mount is already in place. Okay, so we've, we've executed that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go on to the next cell here. We'll talk about the, the magic that's uh, hiding behind each of these different cells, but, uh, but what this does is it says, go out to uh, content drive, which is the drive that we just mounted. Um, my drive refers to your Google Drive. Uh, if you followed the instructions uh, on the, the Google Doc that we were just looking at, then MLP 2021 refers to, it's a shortcut to uh, our uh, Google Drive, our shared Google Drive for the class. And then within that, there's a data sets folder that we were just looking at a moment ago. And then there there's, happens to be a file called BMI data set pickle. Um, this is a fairly sizable file. It's 200 megs. Um, so this is why we're wanting to avoid having to copy this file ar around. Um, but essentially what this cell is doing is setting up that file name and then uh, opening the file name and extracting a Python object from that, uh, from that uh, file. And it turns out there's only one. So that's going to take a second to execute. You'll notice that once it's done executing, the, the next cell is, uh, is set up to execute and one can just hit uh, shift enter uh, again. Um, that now is a reference to an object that happens to be a dictionary. So we can look at the keys associated with that dictionary. So um, this happens to be a brain machine interface uh, data set that has a bunch of neural data, which is, which is this, and then some information about joint angles uh, velocities, accelerations, and torques. So, so uh, I'll talk about where this, this data actually uh, came from uh, at a future uh, time. Uh, we can also ask uh, what the theta component is of this, this dictionary. Um, this happens to be an array of 20 different items. Our data are split into 20 different pieces. Uh, we can also ask for the zeroth piece, what its shape is. It happens to be a NumPy uh, 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 array. And again, uh, in, in some upcoming videos, we'll talk about what all of that means. Um, this happens to be a matrix that it has uh, 1,193 rows and two columns. Uh, this next cell just extracts out information from theta and time. And then the final cell uh, actually generates a plot. So if you get down to uh, this point and you have a plot that looks uh, like this, then you are uh, all good to go. Okay, so that's, that's enough for our quick test. I, I realize I'm not giving you a lot of detail right now, but uh, we'll hit more of that detail in some of the, in some of the next couple of videos. And then over the, the next couple of weeks, we'll actually talk about this particular data set, where it comes from, what it means. And we'll even do some work uh, uh, on the machine learning side with, with this data set. Okay, so uh, moving forward for this uh, semester, um, the, the videos that you are going to be looking at over the course of the semester uh, have been uh, created over the last couple of years for the most part. Uh, and those were done in the context of using Jupyter Lab. And 
so so things will look a little bit different, uh, but uh, but but the essence of what we're doing within the uh, the interface uh, is is the same. So occasionally you'll see references to one of our older lab servers, either ML server uh, or the OSCAR on-demand system. This is a this is a system that the supercomputing folks provide. This is something we could bring up if that uh, turns out to be useful. But I think between CoLab and what you're doing at home, uh, things will uh, work out fine. Um, so it's safe to ignore references to these uh, and instead right now to use uh, CoLab. Uh, Jupiter, the relationship between all of these different things, uh, CoLab supports something called Jupiter Notebook. Uh, Jupiter Lab is a bit more general than Notebook and in particular is useful in that you can have multiple Python environments running at the same time and you can also tile your files. Uh, but for what we're doing in the context of this class, you don't need that level of uh, complexity. Um, so what we've decided to do here is uh, uh, take the, the benefits of uh, the CoLab environment uh, and just uh, accept that uh, the notebook interface is going to be uh, not quite as nice as the JupyterLab uh, interface. But if you are installing your own on your machine, I, I strongly urge you to try out uh, JupyterLab or some of you already have uh, experience with uh, full uh, Python development environments uh, and, and those are fine to, to be using as well.